Good morning. If you have a cell phone, would you turn your cell phone off and turn it to vibrate so that it won't ring in the worship service? Our call to worship comes from Psalm 105, verse 2. Sing to the Lord, sing praises. Tell of all God's wonderful works. Please rise and we're going to sing from all the world over the skies. Christian faith. 
I decree that God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, next slide. Here we go. Next slide. We're going to sing on Well, again, this is a tune you'll know, even though we've never sang it again.
because stay. It says on the outside, the little note says, blade is dull. Right? So, yeah, oof, that is dull. Yeah. How many of you didn't really like to drag this across your face every morning? No, I've got my, you know, I've got my brand new one that has five blades and one, and, and I'm done. This thing, I'd probably end up dead if I shave just once with this thing, I'm pretty sure. You have to have a, a pretty steady hand to, uh, I saw my grandpa do it once, but, but not me, okay? Uh, I, you have to have a pretty steady hand to use one of these things. The point about this one is the blade is dull. So, what good is it? It's just an antique to look at, right? If it, if it isn't sharp, if it's going to take your skin off while you're shaving, then it probably isn't a very good deal. Um, how do we keep our faith sharp to make it useful? One of the ways that we make it sharp is we come to church, right? We sharpen up at least our spirit as we as we come to know God, as God fellowships with us, the Spirit, and is here in His worship service. Read the Bible. What did we do before we came to church today? Before the worship service, we had Bible study before church, and this Bible study is asking some pretty tough questions and making us think extra hard about the way that God works in our lives, and so. We're very, very glad to have Bible studies. How else might we sharpen our faith? How about by talking to God? And we talk to God in prayer, right? Talk to God in prayer. So those are just three ways that we can sharpen our faith is, is by worshiping God and by reading about God and by actually talking to God in prayer. This straight razor is pretty useless unless it's sharpened and used for the purpose for which it was created, which would be to shave. So it is with us. I think we can become complacent in our faith, and therefore our faith can become dull. And um, it's very, very important for us to remember to always try to stay sharp in our faith as well. So, straight razor and a shaven mug and a shaving brush. We'll put those right there. Thank God for electric razors. Okay. Um, today's focus, Paul explains to us what it means for our lives to be, that should be our spiritual worship. Our spiritual worship. Okay. Um, on the prayer list for this morning, I have a joy first, and that joy is that I received an email, we're, we're having a brand new convection oven donated to this church, and it's going to be delivered on September 4th, and it'll be down there with the two stoves that are already down there next to it, the person is also donating a steel table to put it on so that it sits firmly, and he's also donating the electrician to hook it up because it takes 220. Um, so probably when we run 220 to that thing, we turn it on, the lights are going to dim in the rest of the building. That's, that's the way our electricity works in this church. But we are getting a convention oven, which is going to make meal preparation down there a lot easier, I think, uh, because it'll hold more food than what our current ovens do. So I rejoice with that donor and with the electrician that's going to donate time and uh, that's just a, a one thing. It's also the electrician. Um, I've asked him to go upstairs and look at the lighting situation in the clothing pantry so that we can get those lights back on there. So I rejoice over that. Are there other joys this morning? I rejoice that, uh, that Jessica is back and she's got a baby, um, Frank. Frank with it, Franklin. Here you go. The old Franklin up? Let's see Franklin. Can we see Franklin? Or are you going to hide him out? There you go. There you go. He's a peanut. He's about this long. He's a peanut. He's both bubbly 
Jessica, welcome back. And Franklin, welcome back. Yes. And it seems like I knocked right back into my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yet, huh? I'm almost there. I'm not there. Speaking of Vicki, where'd she go? I think she went with Alyssa. Okay. So we want to give thanks for baby Franklin and Jessica.
it, it has to be the right size house, and it has to be a house that can be affordable. And so we're going we're gonna to lift that up. We're going to lift Priscilla up in, in prayer today. I'm glad to see Brandy's back in our Thomas back and his eyes are healed. Wow. His, his eyes uh, had poison ivy when he was cutting grass, and we rejoice that your eyes are better. How many fingers, my boy? There you go. All right. He's now clear to cut the grass. Um, okay. Um, other concerns before I go? Okay, let's pray together in this prayer for spiritual living. God of grace, you have called us to grow in grace, to increase our understanding of Jesus, and to develop a close and intimate relationship with you. Lord, this is what we desire to do, and we pray that we may come to know you more and more each day. We pray that we may learn to walk in spirit and truth, so that we may mature in our Christian faith as we study the Bible and learn to live godly from Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mike Meeker this day, who is recovering from his accident. 
The soreness in his body is slowly going away, God, and he's healing. We give you thanks. We give you thanks that you spared Guy's life as well in, in that accident and that uh, you'd be with him as he goes from transitioning from living in his own house to living someplace that either is assisted living or full-time care. We pray for school boards that are meeting and wrestling with whether or not students will meet in person or whether it should be virtual schools or a hybrid of the two. We pray for all of those uh, teachers who are trying to develop curriculums right now which are different when they're taught in person and when they're taught virtually. And, uh, we ask that you be with the students and the stress that they're going through, not exactly knowing what their future is going to be in the next few weeks to come. We pray for Raquel and for her family. God, right now that family is separated and, and uh, they wish to be reunited. And so we ask God that uh, you might be able to open doors and move the mountains and the barriers to keep that from happening. We pray for Priscilla who's looking for a house right now for her family and for herself. And we pray that just the right size house at just the right price, the right rent will come along so that they can move and, and get into that place. And God, this morning we pray for one day in honesty who's had to go through and make some very tough decisions at the close of the last week. We thank you, God, that you gave her the strength and the courage to make the decisions that she needed to make. We pray that you would continue to assist her as she walks through the steps that are needed to have her life totally restored. And all of these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. <coughs> Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. It comes from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do the people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I'd like to tell you a story that I once heard about a theologian. His name was David Duplissy. Now, David Duplissy was very fortunate to have an audience with folk. And so he flew over to Rome and on his way to his, his audience with the Pope, he was kind of given a tour. And as he toured the Vatican and um, the surrounding grounds, he saw all of the famous statues, he saw the marble pillars and, and uh, the, the great polished floors and the gold and the, the, the paintings, everything. Just before he was to step in to, to meet with the Pope, the cardinal who gave him the tour said to him, well, what do you think of all this? Pretty impressive, wasn't it? And David Duplissy turned to the cardinal and said, It rather reminds me of the Valley of Dry Bones. No matter how pretty a church might look, no matter how well the paint might be, no matter what the stained glasses might look at, no matter how polished the pews are, if there isn't a spirit alive in the church, the church is dead. Amen? For David Duplissy, who was with the Assemblies of God, I believe, it was all about the movement of the Holy Spirit, which he didn't feel. And so he made the comment he did. It was probably a little rude, but nevertheless, he spoke the truth. Now what about our lives? What about our spirituality, our personal spirituality, the way that we live, the way that we move, the way that we act upon our faith. It's polished. I'm in a suit. I'm looking mighty polished. I clean up good, don't I? Well, that pastor, he must be really spiritual. He's wearing a tie. For all you know, I've got on a holy t-shirt. Amen? For all, I've got on some polished shoes, but for all you know, my socks may not have any toes in them. You don't know, do you? Because, see, I've got this veneer put on. And we all do it, don't we, amen? You know, we've got this stuff that we keep underneath. We don't want people to necessarily see. But you know who sees it? God. Amen? God, God knows that there's a spirit in the house or if there isn't. And that's why Paul talks about our spiritual worship. He says, present your lives as a living sacrifice. And that will be...
be your spiritual worship. Present your lives as a living sac a living sacrifice. You hear that? A living sacrifice. What does that mean? To present your lives as a living sacrifice? It means exactly what we were talking about in Sunday school about going all in for God. It means taking all the chips you have on the table and pushing them over and saying, God, I put them in your care. God, I trust in you. Amen? And every thought, in every word, in every deed, every part of my life, every aspect of my life, God, I'm going to give to you. Whatever it is, that's sacrificial living, isn't it? It's not saying, you know, I give my offering to God. We need it, don't we? We need it. But is that 10%? Is that your spiritual worship? That 10%? If you read the Bible, that 10% is the bare minimum that the Bible says to give to God. God doesn't want your wallet. God wants you. God wants all of you, not just 10% of you. God wants 100% of you. And when we decide we're going to give that to God, then that is our spiritual worship. Now Paul says, you just can't do that. You just can't casually do it. Here it is, God. I gave it all to God, so now I can't ever sin again. I'm just going to walk in grace, grace, grace every day of my life. Amen? But we do walk in grace, but we do know that we sin, don't we? Amen? We still tend to... There's times when we just don't want God to see what we're doing, and so we turn our back on God. We walk in separation. That's called sin. So Paul says do this. He says, first of all, don't be conformed to the world. Do not be conformed to the world. What does that mean? The world does things one way, and God does things one way. And sometimes those things agree, and sometimes they don't. And when they don't, that's when our spiritual worship tells us we must follow God and not necessarily our neighbor. Tough walk, huh? That can be a really, really tough walk. Remember old Nicodemus this morning? He's a spiritual leader, and he goes to see Jesus in the night. Now, he goes to see Jesus in the night partially because he's afraid of what his friends will think of. So he's already being conformed to the world. Do you hear me? He sits on the sand hammered and he's afraid what that ruling religious council is going to think about. So he sneaks to see Jesus at night. Anytime you have to sneak in the dark to do something, the Holy Spirit's telling you, ah. Yes? Besides, Jesus says what you do in the dark is going to be revealed in the light anyway. So here, old Master Nicodemus. He sneaks out to see Jesus, and here's how you can tell he doesn't get it. Jesus says to him, you must be born again. And Nicodemus says, are you telling me that we can re-enter our mother's womb and be born again? How is that possible? Because Nicodemus can only see as the world sees. And Jesus says to him, how can you be a religious leader? How can you be a spiritual leader and miss this? I'm talking about being born again, born of water, born of the Spirit, and born of God. Not conformed to this world, but renewed in Christ Jesus. To be renewed in your living relationship with God. Not conformed to this world, but conformed to God. Now what are the things of this world? Me first. How's that? You want to start with that one? Me first. I'm going to give what I get, and if there's any left over, then I'm going to give it to Evil Lynn over here. Me first, though, right? I get my stuff. We've been like that since we were kids. The old example of one of the brown paper bags that I get, I had a penny and a dime in my hand. Kids didn't know any better. And they wanted the penny because it was bigger than the dime. Me first, get it? 
They shortchanged themselves nine sins as they pursued their digger. Now, when we're conformed to the world, you have to ask yourself, what do we shortchange ourselves when we try to live as the world does rather than walking in our faith? Jesus Christ says, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Here's the promise for abundant life. And Jesus says, if you follow me, it's yours. And so, if we choose only the penny, how much abundant life do we shortchange ourselves? This new life that God has for us, this wonderful, fulfilling, deeply meaningful life that God has for us. No, I'm going to follow the world. I'm going to follow the world. And you know, how many of you have ever been disappointed by what the world has to offer? I talked to one of my friends this week, and she was all happy. She bought a brand new car. She was all excited. Brand new. 2020. I won't mention the bank, although one of you in this sanctuary knows what bank it was. I won't mention the bank. She said we were driving at home, and there was a flat, 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 flat under the car. A new car, fresh off the lot, had 12 miles on it. We're styling it now. New car. In the world, you see? Flap, 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 flap. The engine cover that they put on SUVs to keep the engine protected. They didn't put in the screws at the factories. And so this protected cover, flap, flap, flap. So they take it back to the dealership, right? And they have this cover screwed back in. New car. It's quiet. They turn it off and these five thousand dollars computer starts. <laughs> Get back in the car, we're going to the dealership. <sighs> Up they go. Oh my, we need to find a tune that. So they fix the computers. And now the computer not only makes a noise when they shut it off, it's making it longer driving too. It used to be they shut off the key. Now they're going down the highway. It's worse than before, she says. And then while they're driving it down the highway, the light comes on and the sign says, check drive train. Back in style, 220, 2020. And the mechanics tell them, I'm sorry, but you need a new drive train. Sounds like abundant life to you. It sounds like abundant headaches, doesn't it? If we put our faith in only that, we lost. Do not be conformed to this world. Be conformed to the one who says, I've got abundant life. And I'm willing to get... Then if your car breaks down, you can say, that company isn't with me. Those mechanics don't know their elbow from their knee, but... I walk with Jesus. And Jesus knows everything. Amen? Everything. You get through a lot of those crises. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and my Lord explorer dies halfway through the valley. Amen? Amen. God says, I'm with you. God will take you the rest of the way through the valley. Do not be conformed to this world. He says, be transformed. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. You understand that until we renew our minds, we'll never be. We will always conform to the world. We won't be conformed until we are transformed. Until our faith makes a difference in our hearts. Until we are fundamentally different. Until we think differently, we'll never speak differently. Until we think differently, we'll never act differently. If people look at you and they can see Jesus Christ radiating from you, I hunch you've been transformed. But if people look at you and say, 
That's the same old Gary I knew before he was a pastor, Gary. That's the Gary who was a draftsman. That's the Gary who managed the department store. Same old Gary, nothing new about him. And there needs to be some transformation in this place, amen? Something needs to change. God makes us new. That's what Jesus meant when he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be fundamentally transformed and made into a new person. And if you are transformed, then you will be conformed. Not to the realm of this earth, but to the realm of God. In fact, you'll become a worker. You'll become a worker for establishing the realm of God on this earth. Because you'll be thinking in new ways. You see, when you're transformed in the renewing of your mind, and you get up and you say, is what I'm thinking stinking thinking, or is it God thinking? Is what I'm getting ready to say to Carol Lee, is it trash talk, or is it God talk? Will it edify her? Will it lift her up? Will it confirm her in the faith? Is what I'm getting ready to do something that will honor God and glory God, or because I profess to be a Christian and bring God change? Hmm. I didn't say Paul's writing was easy. What does your, your spiritual worship look like? Does it look like the body nights at the local roadhouse? Or is it as dry as the Sistine Chapel? Or is it alive and spiritual and life-receiving and life-giving? Does your thoughts and your walk and your deeds and all that is about you honor God and glorify God's presence in your life? Paul says, offer your lives as a living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. And that will be your spiritual worship. That spiritual worship lies in your transformation. Which in turn will confirm your confirmation. Not to this world but to the realm of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Um, this is the time when we normally receive the offering. Now, because of COVID, we don't actually cast the plate. The plate is on the table at the back of the church. As you're leaving today, if you have an offering, um, just place it there. If you're watching at home, you can still send your offering to uh, Central United Methodist Church, 933 Argentine Boulevard, Kansas City, Kansas, 66105. Okay? Let's sing the doxology together. Please stand. <laughs>
Let's get that wonderful screen. There we go. These are our weekday ministries. These are still going on. Um, if you need support in any of these areas, there are the hours are open. If you'd like to volunteer, there's the hours that are open. Our meal program is Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Um, our congregational challenge to attend church every Sunday. We can do that now that we're open. Um, to participate in at least one outreach ministry of our church. To disciple one person through to making a decision for Christ. And to raise at least $25,000 in the collections for this year. That's not all the money we need to run the church, but we raise the other funds in various other ways. So that's just the offering plan. Okay. Look at that. Birthdays, anniversaries. Hers is on the 25th, and she, see, she's not here. See, she cut out. So, um, we'll sing it next week. I'm sure she's, she's, I think she's helping Melissa, right? Yeah, she's she helping Melissa. <laughs> Vicki is yeah. helping Melissa right yeah. now. So, she's doing the ministry, so we'll let her do her ministry. All right, the hymn of parking is Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. We're going to do first one. And the heavy please stand. hymns at full voice again. And now may the God of grace and joy and peace go with you from this place. And by the presence of God's Holy Spirit dwelling in your lives, may your lives be transformed and conformed to the will of God so that they will be your spiritual worship. For it is in Jesus' name that we tell you to go out and make it a terrific week. Amen. Good to have you back, Paul.